Good afternoon everyone, thank you very much for tuning in to my latest video, I really appreciate it. Uh, just before we get started, I would just like to thank everyone for their continued support, uh, any donations that's came in and your continued kind words that you keep sending to me, thanks very much, it's, it's been an inspiration. Um, so the, the, the video title today is obviously UFOs um, and I'll say it again. I want to keep this challenge, uh, this channel relevant. Um, I don't want it just to be me making videos and talking for the sake of talking. I want, I want people to to hopefully get something from them um, because I find it difficult to sit and watch even a film now or, or anything a TV or anything like that because I think to myself, well, what, what am I getting out of it? Am I getting anything educational out of this? And if the answer is no. I don't usually watch it, and I'm not saying that anyone else should think like that, I'm just saying that that's me. Um, however, I'm start, I, I try to come out of that because it is, it's always good to sit and appreciate a film and take your mind off things. Um, that said, there's no point in me sitting here rabbiting unless you're going to get something out of it. And the other day there actually, someone had said in the comments not to do this video because there was no facts or evidence to suggest anything about UFOs or extraterrestrials. Now this person, I'm entitled to your opinion, but just because you've not seen any facts or evidence um, related to this subject, it doesn't mean to say it doesn't exist. And people say to me all the time, there's no evidence for that. No, you've not seen the evidence for it. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Um, and, and telling me not to do something is a sure way of getting me to do it. And this is why I need to do these videos, or this video, because this is very, very important. This is so important, this. Um, because this, I talked about getting manipulated and getting a false sense of reality sort of uh, placed around your surround, surrounding yourself. And this is a big part of that, to think that we are in a, in a universe the size it is alone. Is, is as ridiculous as it is stupid. And I think a lot of the people that say that, they ridicule it with reflex action, that it's just nonsense. Um, however, when you look at the news now, the, the amount of UFO reports on it is just, they're just unreal. It, it's almost like they want you to know about it now. And you have to question that as well because there was obviously talk of using Project Bluebeam, um, which is a holographic light technology, um, and it can put illusions in the sky, so to speak, that make it makes it look like there's something there, but it actually isn't. And they were going to actually use that to manipulate people um, with a false alien invasion. It's the ultimate manipulation into fear. Um, especially when you don't know there's anything else out there or if you've been told your whole life that there's, there's, we're the only ones that exist and there's nothing else out there and don't worry about it. Which is, again, is just, it's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous and it's not true. Um, and you look at life, you look at the, just the, the body types on this planet alone, the amounts of different types of people there are, the different colours of skin, all the, the, the different types of uh, uh, wildlife. <laughs> and this, this is just one tiny little band of frequency. And as I said in the Nature Reality video, this, again, this is David Icke information, but it's, it's true. And this, I mean, I checked this with scientists as well. They do say that, that, that humanity can only see 0.05% of everything that exists. So that, that's like our channel, so to put that into perspective, that's like saying back in the day when people used to get Sky and they would have maybe 130 channels or something and someone was to sit there and say that they watch Sky Sports News and someone else would come in and say, well actually you can go outside of that and you can go and watch Sky Sports 1 or you can go and watch a movie or something and that person would then be sitting, no that's not true, I can only watch this one channel. Everyone would be calling them ridiculous and silly and stupid, um, and it is. But this this situation with regards to the, the size of the universe, is, it's even worse. And I've actually, I always knew it was massive. I think we've all got a, a fair idea of just how big it is. And 
I'm not sure how many is can fathom just how big it is. Um, and I've actually, I've, as I always do, I've taken some notes because it's one thing sitting having a conversation with someone in a, in a living room or something and you saying approximate numbers and this is approximately what it is. So it's important to take notes to obviously make sure you've gotten the numbers right. Now, when... And this, this isn't a secret. This is not a secret. In the observable universe, there is approximately two trillion galaxies. Two trillion. We live in one. One of those, out of 200 trillion, we live in one. Approxi there's approximately 200 billion stars in each individual galaxy. So that's 200 billion in each individual galaxy. And there is 2 trillion observable galaxies. There is approximately between 7 and 12 planets orbiting each individual star with approximately two exoplanets in the Goldilocks zone, which is what Earth is. Some say it's more, some say there's six, but let's just keep it at the lower end of the number, there's two. So there is at least two planets in each of these star systems, around these stars, that could possibly harbour life. So when you think of that, and then you think of just in this little tiny band of frequency that we can see, the 0.05%, and you, you couple what, you, what I've just said about the size of the universe with all the life forms that we see in this one tiny band of frequency, I'll ask again with that in mind, do you believe that this is the only, this is the only planet that could sustain life? I just... When I first started learning about this stuff, and I did, I had to write this down because I'd heard that there was forty, there was at least 40 million Earth-like planets that were in the Goldilocks zone in our Milky Way alone. Since my research, I've done a little bit of research this morning because it, it's been a long time since I've looked at any of this stuff, and the Kepler estimated that out of 50 billion planets in the Milky Way, there's at least 500 to a billion planets in the Goldilocks, 500 million to a billion planets in the Goldilocks zone. So that's the zone, again, that Earth's in, that needs to sustain life, water, etc., etc. And that's not even including the types of life forms that are out there that, that aren't the same as us, that don't, that don't harbour the, the, the type of biological life that we've got, because there's load, there's infinite different types of life out there. It's absolutely teeming with life. And there's many that, that don't require oxygen and they may need different circumstances to sustain their, their, their societies or their civilizations. And then it's like, <laughs> well, you're not even including that. And anyone that says that's not possible, all they need to do is go and look at places like the Mariana Trench where there's no light gets to, it's the deepest part of the ocean. And yet that sustains life because life is highly adaptable. There's fish in caves that have not got any eyes. Um, because there's no light gets to them. Life is highly adaptable. And, 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 and it's the same in the universe. And then you get to the sort of Drake equation. Now the Drake equation is it's, it's, it's like a mathematical equation based on the size of the universe with the numbers I've just given you. Um, and they use this equation to determine um, if there's going to, what the chances are that it'll harbour like a, an intelligent life form. Now again, this th th this number I'm about to bring up here was based on the numbers that I had in 2016. This is not based on these. And at the time, the guy had said that even if there's a one in ten chance that there's a there's a, a, a an intelligent civilization in our galaxy, there would still be 25 million of them based on the size of it. And that's just a one in ten chance. And it'll be more than that based on these numbers. And then you, and it's like, you believe that something this size doesn't harbour any other life but here. So we're a cosmic accident. It's essentially never happened before. It's not happened since and never will again. 
Is that what you believe or is that what you're trying to get me to believe? Because I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. And then you look at the UFO sightings. Again, this is numbers from years ago. The, the, I think this was 2016 as well. There was a reporting, reported 12 million UFO sightings. That's enough. And there's, this, is a, this is a line from a film. Um, what's it called again? The Fourth Kind. Brilliant film. That's enough to win any court case, 12 million witnesses. And it's true, it is. And I'm not sitting here saying that, well, this must be true. I've seen these things. I have literally seen these things. Because this, the Fishing Galloway, South West Scotland, it's actually a hot spot for them. And people say to me, well, how come I've never seen them? Well, I've never seen them here. And it's like, well, how often do you look up? Do you look, do you look at the sky? Well, I don't. Well, that's why you've never seen them. See, what, what people like that mean is, they mean is that they don't see them flying by when they're sitting watching Hollyoaks or Netflix. And they maybe look up for, up for 10 seconds and, oh, there's nothing there. It doesn't exist. They say seeing is believing, but actually it's the other way around. Believing is seeing. And I never used to believe in them. I didn't. Um, I didn't believe in them. I just didn't think it was possible because of the, 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 the programming that's in your mind. You're, you're, you're programmed to look through a certain set of glasses. Um, and to think that you're alone and, and the size of that is just absolute madness. It, it scares you to reality in ways I can't tell you. However, I started watching a show called Ancient Aliens in 2013. And, I mean, there's some, there's some gash on it as well. There's some nonsense on it as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, but there's some brilliant stuff on it too. And if you are just getting into this stuff, I definitely recommend it. And when I started watching it, I started to think about it and the, the size of the planet, the size of the universe, etc. Um, and then I thought to myself, I thought, geez, well, this, this could actually be true. And then I started to see them myself. The first one that I'd seen... There was two golden globes going like that, that way. Never forget it, never told anyone about it. And then from there on, I used to look up all the time. Um, and I mean like, not just for 10 minutes. I mean, I would get a sore neck from looking up. And I'll be honest with you, some of the, some of the phenomena I've seen above the skies in that back garden when I've been smoking a joint like in a summer's night and it's, it's dark or even in a winter's night is absolutely unbelievable. If I'd, if I'd told you about some, some of them, you wouldn't believe me. Like Some of the ones I've seen, you wouldn't believe me. There was one I'd seen the other week there, and I can't even, well, it was two months ago, I can't, I, I'm not even going to attempt to describe it to you because you'll think I'm mad, but I, I, I know what I saw. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, the size of the universe, that's not even getting into the size of the multiverse. So that's multiple universes. Um, the theory of that is, is, is very interesting as well. So, and this is just an infinitesimal part of that, this universe, tiny, tiny part of it. I mean, and yet you get called mad for saying these things. It's, it really is. It's, it's, it's quite, it can be quite disheartening if you've not got your thick skin up. You've sat and put all this time in and looked at this stuff and actually put, learned about it and opened your mind for someone to turn around and rubbish it. And then you ask them, well, what research have you done into this? And they well, I've not done any. Well, how do you know that? Oh, I just do. No, you don't. No, you don't. You've just been told. That's it. That's all you, you know what you've been told. And I've had people say to me as well, oh, if I knew that, if this was true, I'd know about it. And I also had somebody else say to me as well, because um, I'd said we'd already made contact with extraterrestrial life, which we have. Gary McKinnon, um, he's a Scottish guy from Falkirk that moved to somewhere near Essex. And he was nearly got extradited, Theresa May stopped it, because he'd hacked into uh, NASA um, and found a programme called Solar Warden with non-terrestrial officials logged on there. In other words, they weren't from this, this planet. And then you look at Corey Good's story. I, I, I do wonder about him, but that doesn't mean to say everything he said is wrong. Because Solar Warden is, he reckons that's what he was part of. And this Solar Warden was out there long before he came forward. And then you look at Roswell. I don't know if you've any have heard of that. I, I mean, I, when I first started getting in, I still got bored of hearing about Roswell because it's all this, all this thing we talk about. But it is, it's still important. In 1947, Roswell, New Mexico, there was a crash, a crash landing of another world craft 
And they, somebody, I can't remember who it was that found it, but they called the, 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 the Air Force or the police or whatever, and they got in touch with the Air Force base, which was situated close by to the crash. And the, um, the commander of the Air Force or whatever he was, it had attended the site, the wreck site, and, and could concluded that this was not, the material that he had witnessed was not of this world. And actually two bodies were recovered and apparently one of them was still alive. Now, the American media reported on this and said that they found extraterrestrials, which they had. And then obviously the powers that be come in, the real powers, the shadow masters, they then come in and say, this is wrong. You need to put something out and retract that. Which they did three days, two or three days after it. And claimed that it actually mistook it for a weather balloon. Something that this man would have been familiar of. He would, he would have known what that was. So that, that, that's just one example. And then the two, the two bodies that were found, like I say, one was still alive apparently. And I've seen pictures of these. And you can tell it's real. Because I got a kind of thing in my uncomfortable from this. Like, well, that's really strange that. And everyone says that at Area 51, or the, uh, that's where they'd gone, which they probably would have. However, what they don't realise is, is that Area 51 is the sort of poster, the poster base for this stuff, and it's not the main one, although everyone thinks it is, because what what the secret space programme have got are the underground projects, or the DUMS, the Deep Underground Military Bases, as they're called. Um, they have got a network, a tram network, or a train system that crisscrosses the whole country. So, yes, you could have went into Area 51, but then they would just got into the train system and ended up at the other end of the country. And I've listened to people that have used this train system, because there is, like I say, there's an underground network. It's the best way to keep things secret. And yet, and this is all going on, and people will laugh at you for saying this stuff. And then... You look at some of the UFO sightings that we've seen and there's, there was one in Arizona in 1997 called the Phoenix Lights. For years I had thought that was, um, that was UFOs, but apparently I've since found out that it was Project Bluebeam, the, what the, the, the holographic light technology that, I was, that I'd mentioned. Now the Farsight Institute have claimed to have remote viewed this, 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 this sighting. Remote viewing, just simply, it's a mental process where they can use their consciousness to go to a target any, 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 any point in time and they use their mental abilities to write down on a bit of paper what they feel and how accurate they are is just unbelievable. Like It really is unreal how accurate they can be with this stuff. And it does exist because the CIA had a remote viewing program. It was in those declassified documents I've mentioned before with regards to the MK Ultra. Um, but that was just one of them. And then there was, a, there was another one in the 1950s over um, Washington DC in the White House. And there was a good lot of them, but apparently that was actually, that was Nazi craft. Now people say, well, what are you talking about? The Nazis, they got beat. Well, they didn't really because, see, this, this is the thing, like, Leonardo da Vinci said that to realize, you must learn how to see and realize that everything connects to everything else, which it does. Now, the Second World War was not about what you think it was. It was about many different things, as I've said. The state of Israel, creation of the state of Israel, the, the United Nations, the Operation Paperclip's another part of it you should look into. But it was also about technology, because the Germans had advanced technology. Now, there was a crash, much like the one in Roswell, in 1933 in a German forest. I forget where it was located in the country. However, the, the, the Nazi party had retrieved this, this technology and they were starting to use it. However, I've also since been told that they, they couldn't mount guns to this technology because it's, it's based on natural law. Whether that's like the technology is, whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, they'd retrieved this and they, the, the, the Americans or the West got very, very, well, on the face of it, they got very worried. But the Germans knew they were going to lose the war anyway. It was a lot of them left before it had even begun. And they got any bases on the moon as well. I know that's out there, but it's true. That's why the moon's got so many airbrushed pictures of it, because they don't want you seeing what's there. Well, anyway, where I'm going with this is, is that when the Nazis lost the war, they had gone to Antarctica. 
And um, they went Hitler as well. And the, the Russians will tell you that the teeth that were found in the bunker, but the, the bunker that were apparently Hitler's, were from a, they were from a, a I think it was a twenty two year old woman who had no relation to Hitler whatsoever, so it wasn't him. Apparently, he had gone to Antarctica first, and he ended up in Argentina, um, living in a house that belonged to the Mercedes family. That's another story that I might go into. But anyway, he'd gone to Antarctica first, and there was a there was a Nazi base set up there. Um, and actually, Jim Mars, he wrote a book called The Rise of the Fourth Reich, and I think that's what this is about, and I keep forgetting to buy that book, actually, I'll need to get on it today. Well, anyway, um, obviously, because there's a grand chessboard and we're kept in the dark for most of it, the powers that be know this stuff, because um, Hitler was just there to do a job. That's, he was there to do a job. If it wasn't him, it would have been someone else. Well, anyway, when they'd gone to Antarctica, um, they, see, they knew that, the West, the, the highest law of the land for the West, America, UAE, and the UK, etc., is that they do not want us knowing about extraterrestrials. And people often say to me, why is that? Why do they not want us knowing that? And it's very simple, because when we get over the fact, if they were to arrive, or if we were to find out they were real, and once we go over that fact, we would, the first question we would ask would be, well, how did they get here? How did they travel here um, and still obviously be a, a decent age and not die with radiation or anything like that? That would be the first question. And it's obvious. They are using advanced technology, electrogra electrogravitics, etc., which I'm going to go into a little bit. I've got some data there that I'm going to read out to you. So apparently what this, this, this offshoot of the Nazis had did, they'd flown these, these, these craft that was recovered in the forest that they had reverse engineered and used to their own gains, they basically told, I can't remember what the deal was, but they were, they were trying to strike up a deal with the US government, it was Eisenhower at the time, and Eisenhower's got a lot of connections to extraterrestrial. Um, and they knew, and they basically said to Eisenhower and his, and, his, and his administration, if you don't sign the deal, we are going to blow this wide open and let the people know that these exist. So as a threat, apparently they'd flown, they'd flown these craft over the White House to show that they were, they were serious, and apparently the deal was signed. I should really, I can't remember what that is. Laura Eisenhower's his great granddaughter, and she does a lot of videos on that. I don't know, I haven't listened to any of her stuff for a long time, like, not that I ever really did, but she, she would probably be able to tell you better uh, about that story. But anyway, it's the highest law of the land. They don't want us knowing about this technology because it renders, they have $600 trillion worth of gas, electricity and fossil fuels, um, which would be rendered completely worthless, literally overnight, if this technology was revealed. And yeah, I'm getting people tell me there's no facts or evidence to, to, to back this stuff up. So, if there's no evidence or facts to back up that this advanced technology actually exists, then why were papers, when you think about the, it's called the, the, Bef the Bifield-Brown effect in electro electrogravitic propulsion. And this, this particular paper was written in 1929. Um, I forget the guy's name. It's Belfield, obviously there's, there's two guys, Bifield-Brown. Um, I'll just read it to you. This was in 1929. This is regarding um, gra gravity and electricity and magnetic propulsion, right, okay? So, there have been long rumours that classified anti-gravity technology have been secretly developed by military corporate entities but kept from the public realm for over seven decades. These technologies are based on the, 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 the Byfield-Brown effect, which was pioneered by Thomas Townsend, T Thomas Townsend Brown. In a 1929 paper, Brown described how Einstein's efforts to develop a unified field theory had inspired him to find a fundamental connection between matter and matter, gravity and electricity. And this is just an excerpt from it. There is a decided tendency in the physical sciences to unify the great basic laws and to relate by a single structure or mechanism. Such individual phenomena as a gravitation, electrodynamics and even matter itself. It is found that matter and electricity are very closely related in structure. In the final analysis, matter loses its traditional individuality and becomes merely an electrical condition. Of course it does, it's a simulation. 
Um, and it's, it, it's an illusion, it doesn't exist. In fact, it might be said that the concrete body of the universe is nothing more than an assemblage of energy, which this is exactly what it is, which in itself is quite intangible. Yes, because it's just waveform information. Of course, it is self-evident that matter is connected with gravitation and it follows logically that, that the electricity is likewise connected. These relations exist in the realm of pure energy and consequently are very basic in nature. In all reality, they constitute the true backbone of the universe. It is needless to say that the relations are not simple and full understanding of their concepts. Complicate by the outstanding lack of information and research on the real nature of gravitation. So, this was a paper in 1929 that was describing electrogravitics or anti-gravitical craft, which is actually a misnomer because it's not anti-gravity and they don't actually fly either UFOs, they, they levitate and teleport through space and time. So it's a completely different technology altogether. So when people say I've seen a UFO fly, no you didn't. Um, you've seen it levitating and teleporting, just like bees. Bees don't fly, they, they, they're tapping into the Earth's energy, uh, the Earth's gravity, and it's like anti-gravitics because they've got, again, they're not aerodynamic bees, but they can still fly, and it's because of this system that they're tapping into. Um, and then that, 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 that sort of brings me to the genius that, that, that was Nikola Tesla. Now... This is another thing, another guy that gets a hard time of it, who he had given us so bloody much, given us so much to this world, and yet he's barely remembered. In fact, he's, 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 they say that he was actually crazy and that he used to speak to pigeons and all that bloody nonsense, but maybe he did. It didn't change the fact the guy was a genius. And, this man had a working smartphone in as, as far back as 1926. Um, like I say, some of the some of the technology that he'd given us was just was just absolutely amazing. He gave us, I mean, we still use the, the electrical grid that he, that he designed, the alternating current. Um, Edison, he, he was up against them. And if you look at the, the campaigns of both of them at the time, Edison uses all the tricks and propaganda that the powers that be still use now. Um, to try and obviously undermine Nikola Tesla because he tried to say his was better, but it obviously it wasn't. Looking back in hindsight, the guy was a bloody fraud. Um, but when you bear in mind that paper that was written in 1929, and then Nikola Tesla working with wireless technology, even before 1926, because he had it working in 1926, he also had a free energy device working, just a quick story. Um, JP Morgan, who was actually funding him to, to create such a device, um, or a new form of energy. Um, Tesla had completed this and he took a working prototype to him and had said to him that um, this is it, this is, this, is, this is what you asked for. And apparently Morgan had asked him where the meter was. And Tesla said, that's it's not that type of technology. This is, this is free, There's, there is no meter, it's free energy. And that changed the, obviously the nature of the interview and there was, JP Morgan got very angry and started to accuse Nikola Tesla of trying to bring down the American economy. You're doing away with jobs, people putting up posts to think electricity and the work that goes into making that happen. You're trying to take that away from people. Well, no, not as many people would need to do that if we've got this because it powers us infinitely without any pollution using the electricity that's all around us. I would suggest um, looking at the, the electric universe model um, which can be replicated in a lab using an experiment whereas the big band can't so I don't know why that's accepted as, as, as correct and there's a Michael Tarbert wrote a book called The Electric Universe I haven't read it I've, I've read his holographic universe one it's brilliant published in 1991 and it's unreal the information that's in that nearly 30, well, what, yeah, 30 years ago 30 odd years ago it's just crazy that that information was out there back then. But anyway, um, the electric universe can be replicated in the lab. And Tesla knew this. He knew how to harness this. Um, and he had like a Tesla coil. And I wanted to, I wanted to obviously write it down because I'm not a scientist. I, I like to get keep things right. Um, so the, 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 
the currency, what he had was, right, this is the Tesla coil, and he had two towers, and he put a coil through it, and frequencies, and apparently what happened was, um, lightning started to spark from one, he would then join a, a, a wire to them, and he could actually power his lab free, it didn't, it wireless, he didn't need it, now people say that doesn't exist, but he actually, he, Nikola Tesla demonstrated this, on a stage with two light bulbs that were wireless. So this man knew how this stuff worked and some of his inventions, it was just absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I mean, he invented, he invented um, radar, but he, he got robbed. Someone stole it from him and, and, and he was asked at a science fair way back when. He said, look, the guy said, look, does, does it not bother you that this person stole your, your idea? He said, no, what bothers me that he doesn't have any of his own. So this is the kind of humanitarian he was and he wanted to give this to us so that we, we, we could have a better future and it was taken from us and this was a hundred years ago. Like I say, he's using the, alter the alternating current. Um, the Tesla coil actually written down his, his inventions. Oh, here they're, here they're here. So the world's wireless system where, where, with a, the, the, this phone that I'm using right now came from him. This concept of this, this technology came from him. And he was talking about the fact that you could communicate instantaneously with someone, no matter where you or they were on the globe, regardless of distance. Again, 1926. Ask yourself where we would be right now had we gotten that technology. And then you look at like, um, you look at how far everything's came, and yet we're still using the same technology to power our, our vehicles that we were using over 100 years ago. We've not advanced in that. How's that? Because they don't want us. We have advanced in it. They just don't want us to know it. Alternating current. Um, robotics. The Tesla oscillator. The violet ray. Teleforce. It's just, it's just unbelievable what this man invented, and yet no one knows who he is or who he was. And he had the Tesla turbine as well. It was a piston engine, um, which powered powered anything, automobiles, whatever, that which used combustion to rotate discs. The invention it merged this to create a centrifugal pump by moving fluid into the path of least resistance and making fuel more efficient. Even that, why are we not using that? And it wasn't just inventions like this that he invented, it was healing technologies using sound frequencies. Because everything's energy, everything's a frequency. And yet again, no one knows who he is. And someone had actually, I'd asked my nephew, as I've said before, when he was doing a science show, to ask his teacher if, he'd, if she'd heard of him. And someone actually had the audacity to say in my comments that, um, they don't believe that a science teacher didn't know who he was. So what you're saying, my nephew's a liar. I'm pretty sure if, 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 if the teacher had said to him, yes, he would have come back and said, yes, he was a seven-year-old kid at the time or an eight-year-old kid. No reason to lie. So it sounds like that person was probably in a bit of denial, which most people are, and it's embarrassing. And you, they really do need to pull their heads out their arses with it. I'm sorry, but they do. Um, and I've, again, I've spoken to a teacher up in Glasgow once, and I, it was when I first started learning all this stuff, and I asked him, like, I says, look, I says, do you know Nicola Tesla? And she did know who, who he was. I said, well, can you not teach your children about it? And she says, no, I can't. I said, well, why not? What would happen if you did? And she said, well, I would, um, I would lose my job because it, it was not on the curriculum. So, let, so the man that gave us so much, even today, even what we're still using today, is not on the curriculum to be taught. And this is obviously why. Because he had such advanced technology which would set this planet free. I mean, you think about it, right? If, if energy, if this free energy, just the free energy came out, right? Just that. Imagine what, how much it would, it would literally, it would, this world would collapse overnight. It would collapse overnight because oil would be gone. So that'd be all the all the Exxon and all the standard oil all gone. Banks would be finished. It's 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 all the it's just I mean it would change everything. It would absolutely change completely everything. 
It really would change this world. And that's why, because abundance is freedom, scarcity is control. So the, so the way the world runs just now is um, it's on oil. Someone once told me that money makes the world go around. No, it doesn't. The world goes around all by itself. Money is certainly not a part of it. Because it was spinning all on its, on its own before money came here. But yet, that's their form of control. And this is just... See, there's so many fires they need to put. This is why everything's connected. Um, the UFO question's connected to it because that these are the types of technologies that these UFOs are using, which has crashed here, as I've already explained. And they've back-engineered it. So... They've got that. Now, that said, I do understand why they need to keep it from people also. Now, we need, to, we need to grow up. That's why it gives them an excuse. And people often say to me, now, if these extraterrestrials actually exist, why the hell don't they just come land on West, um, Washington, D.C.'s lawn, was the reference that was used at the time, or whatever. And I said, well, they can't just do that. Why not? Because it doesn't just change our reality. It changes their reality. This is about responsibility. That, that's, we are here to save ourselves. No one's coming to do this for us. No extraterrestrials, no Donald Trump, no Vladimir Putin, no woke rebellion, none of that. It's on us. Now, with that said, if an extraterrestrial craft had landed on the White House lawn and everyone's all at their wheel, it may cause some panic and chaos because if, if for people that are in denial about it, when, if, if you're in denial about something and you find out that actually what you were, were in denial about is actually true, that can have a, a, that can have a detrimental, detrimental effect on you. That's not the only reason though. The only reason is that if they do come down and it goes wrong, we would be able to then turn around and say to them, well, actually, maybe if you hadn't landed down here and interfered, this wouldn't be happening. That, again, is shunning responsibility. And there would be people that, that, that did that. So to avoid that, they need to stay out of it. They need to stay out of it anyway, because we are, we're on our own here. We're get, we are getting some assistance, there's no doubt about it. But we're on our own. It's no one's going to do this for you. And I say this all the time to my family members with regards to learning about themselves in the world. No one's coming to do this for you. It, they're not coming to do it. You need to put something in. You're only going to get out what you put in. So that so that that is one of the reasons why. And it's just <laughs> I understand it's, it's obviously difficult to accept, but with regards to the numbers and the size of this bloody universe that, that's, that's, that, that, that we inhabit, to say that there's nothing else out there is just absolutely ridiculous. And then you start to look at the ancient world, like some of the structures in the ancient world that were apparently built by people who were primitive. It's ridiculous. I mean, look at the, 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 the pyramids. I'll give the Great Pyramid at Giza for, a, for, a, for, a, for, a, for an example. Now, apparently, again, I can't remember the numbers on this, but the, the, it took, the, for how many blocks and the size of those blocks um, that make up that, that structure, that magnificent structure, um, they had to have been, to build it in the time they did build it in, they would have had to have been laying a block, so I think it was like every minute. And it was just, it's just impossible, utterly impossible, because for a start, they're massive. So, and they've tried all these different ways, oh, it's, this is how they've lifted it up. No, it's this way, it's that way. And some of them are quite plausible and you think, but it's not, that's not the only problem. It's the mathematics behind the structure. It is absolutely mind-boggling, especially the shaft that comes through the middle of it. That's advanced, advanced mathematics. There's no doubt about that. And they had to have used some type of sound frequency technology, in my opinion, where... The levitation, um, again, this, this technology, this, this is what I've been talking about, is probably being used to levitate these blocks and put them into place. That's my opinion on it. Um, I've no evidence of that. But that's what I think's happened. That's how I think they've... It's the, only, it's the only way it can be done. Does it mean it was extraterrestrials? No. But what it does mean is, is that there's technology being, that was being used all those, all those thousands of years ago that we no longer have access to. And then there's some of the other structures in the ancient world that 
stones that weigh a thousand tons that are lifted up. Hundred feet, it's crazy. It's just, and then you've got big massive blocks weighing over a hundred tons more that are joined together and you can't get a cigarette paper through them. They've tried so many times to replicate it, but uh, they can't do it. And I've heard many of them say that even if we had, if, even if they had cranes and or like some of the experiments I've seen, even if we were using modern technology, this would be very, very difficult. Especially when you consider the blocks that were used were actually, they were transported miles away down the bloody Nile. And how have they got them there? There's just so many unanswered questions. And yet we're asked to believe that it was primitive people that did this. Well, it was manly, it was labour power that done it. Well, even with that, even with thousands of men, it's, it's not happening. And then when you think to yourself that the three pyramids at Giza are actually aligned to Orion's belt, this was before astronomy. So how the hell did they just get, oh, we'll just, what we'll do is, mate, we'll put this here, this here, this here, and we'll hope for the best. And it just so happens that the best they got, because it's exactly, almost exact, an exact alignment. And again, as I mentioned in my uh, climate change video, there's, there's loads of um, unanswered questions with the mathematics behind that, representations of the Earth and the, the circumference of it, etc, etc. They're, they're, they're endless. They're absolutely endless. We're amazing. This story's amazing. What you don't know or what we don't know fills books. So we need to start reading them. Because this history goes back a very, very long time. And we need to get to grips to the fact that there are endless other life forms out there and that there's nothing to be scared of. There, there, there isn't. I actually see it as a form of racism. You're scared of that race just because they look different. Imagine, imagine you've done that on here. Imagine you've done that on planet Earth. That's... I don't like the look of him. He scares me. So that means they need to be marginalised. How's that any different? And I, I've got a, like I said, I've got a couple of nephews and I, they ask me, do you think extraterrestrials are real? Yes, I do. Because I've seen them. I've actually seen them. And I, they, when I think about it, the first one I've ever seen, I was a child um, and it was round about Christmas time. And it was just seen the same thing many times now. Um, just, yeah. They're not, see, once you've seen them that many times, there's nothing really that spectacular, most, most of them. Some of them are quite cool, but some of them it's just, all right, there's another one, it's like a plane going over. Um, and I know the difference between a plane, the space station, a UFO, and a satellite, because I've been looking at them long enough. Um, anyway, so when I was a child, it was around about Christmas, and I'd seen one of these white dots flying all over, and I can remember saying to my mum and dad, there's Santa, and they obviously just thought a kid, thinking it's Santa. But now I know, since I started obviously viewing the, 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 these, these UFOs and seeing them for myself, I knew that's what it was at the time. I don't care whether anybody believes me, I know, I know what I see, I've got no reason to lie about it. Why would I? I mean, what's the point? If I hadn't seen them before, I hadn't seen them, there's nothing you can do about it. So the next time you're, 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 you're out and it's a, it's a nice night, lie on your back and look up and I guarantee you, you'll see something. Or even before you do that, just, just have a look into some of the stuff that I've looked at today, even just have a look at the size of the the observable universe and the, then the multiverse. There's just so much for us to know. There really, really is. And then there's, a, there's actually another one, the Rendles, Rendles, sorry, the Rendlesham Forest incident in 1980. Have a look at that. That's an amazing story. So there was a US Air Force base in Nottingham in 1980. Um, there was two guys who were for Ameri from America working there and they'd gone out into Rendlesham Forest and found a craft. Now, they didn't know what this craft was, but they put their, I can't remember the whole story, the one bit I can't remember about it, one of them had put their hand on it. And years later, and I don't know if he'd done it at the time or it was years later, but he'd written, because he'd got all these binary numbers in his head, zero, one, one off electrical charges, and he started to write them down. And, and, and he's writing these, these, these zero ones on this bit of paper. And, and it seems like nonsensically writing them down. Well, well however, once he was finished, the guy that asked him to do it had then said, actually, you've just written the coordinates for a, 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 an island that was just off the coast of Britain and Ireland in the Irish Sea called High Brazil that, that was there eons and eons ago, probably pre-Atlantis. And it was just, the chances of that being coincidence is just, I'm sorry, I'm not buying that. 
It's on an episode of Ancient Aliens. We go and look at it. Rendlesham Forest incident, 1980, UFO, whatever. It's and there's been so many of them. There's been there's been one in Brazil. There's been one in Wales. There's just so much to know about this world, and we don't know anything. And that's why we need to think. Because if we don't think, we're going to lose our senses. I know it can be difficult. It's, listen, no one had a tougher time with this stuff than me. No one did. I used to sit there, right, I'll try and I'll read something. And then it would go, it would be totally at odds with my belief system. That would be it. Page closed, go back to doing what I was doing. I, see, the thing about it is, it's, that's evidence of growth. When you can read opinions or listen to opinions that you're not necessarily agreeing with, or in fact, is it odds with your belief system? And you can still sit and listen to that whilst keeping your emotional intelligence. Then that's growth. And you should be really proud of yourself. That, and, that, and that should be the aim for us. I mean, there's just so much to know. There's the Montauk Project as well that I haven't mentioned. It was a secret um, underground base that was off Montauk in, near New York. And it was, it was run by Nazi collaborators, fascists. And it was shut down by the people that were on the base and they sabotaged it. It's, a, it's an amazing story. Um, you'll find stuff, apparently Stranger Things on Netflix. The first season of that is, is connected to, is, 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 is loosely based on the Montauk project. And this is why they used, and, and MK Ultra, I think, would something to do with it as well. And this is why they used the German spelling of control and mind control, MK because of the Nazi, the Nazi collaboration. So there's another fun fact. See, all these connections exist, and unless you actually look in it, you're never going to find out about it. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to say it one more time, the next time you've, and if this does interest you, look into it. Even start with the ancient, start with ancient aliens, that's what I did. And just watch it for there, and see what, see what tickles your fancy, whatever it is that floats your boat, get in amongst it, because it is amazingly interesting stuff. And it will, it'll change the game for you. Because you're opening up to a whole new reality, a whole new frequency. You open your mind and your heart. The, the more you... Because people say to me, oh, I can't take in that information. I can't take in as much information as you will. Do you know something? I never used to be able to either. But see, the more you open up your mind and your heart, you start sort of getting into it. The more you can take on. And then the more you can take on, and the more you can take on, you keep going, you can take on even more. And then before you know it, you find yourself understanding things that you never thought possible. Um, and I, I, if I can do it, anyone can. Uh, it's time to get to work, people. And just before I go, actually, um, I don't know if he's noticed this. I, on the news the other day, there, there was a, a titanium obelisk, let's call it, had arrived in the, the Welsh countryside. Um, there's no evidence of anyone clearing any brash or anything out, out the way or anything like that. Um, it just ended up sitting there with no evidence of how it actually got there. I first thought, a drone may have done it, maybe a drone, but you would obviously need to know how far it was into the ground and how heavy it was, etc, etc, but it is hollow. But it's quite, I mean, it's quite, and it's quite intriguing. There's a few of them that's popped up all over there. They're saying it could be extraterrestrial. And then you look at the crop fields, sorry, uh, the crop circles. And I've actually used to live in Somerset um, in Bath. So I've seen one. Um, and I remember my papa used to go to his clock shop that he owned. And um, there was, well, you'd see one in the, in the field. And oh, it's just drunk. It's just drunk, uh, drunk farmers coming home from the pub. And then it's like, no. It's, granted, I've seen some of them, some guys doing it. But they're just not on the level of the real crop circles, and there is a difference. Um, when these crop circles, when they appear, the next year, there's like three or four times the crop on the on the previous year. And it's something, it's obviously got something to do with the energy. I mean, there's high counts of this type of radiation as well. So that's how you can tell the difference between a real one and one that's been done by drunk farmers, as it were, as it were. And some of them are just so highly complex, it's unreal. So, so, and, and, and I've heard them being remote viewed as well, and apparently it's like a ball of light, and I've actually heard that farmer's dog um, describe this before, how they'd just seen a ball of light and their dog started barking, and then when they went back to it, like, I don't know, it was like 20 minutes, the crop circle was there. But like I say, I mean, at the time, I didn't think anything of it, because I had my, my papa telling me there, who was seen as really intelligent, that, 
no, that's not right, it's not right, don't worry about it, that was only 13. Kick myself because I wish that I'd had more of a look at it at the time, which I could have, but obviously you don't think like that at 13. And then you've got to obviously question why there, why there is so much in the news about this, because they didn't want you to know about this stuff, so it's possible they could be preparing us for another light show of some kind, who knows. But that's why I've done the video, and, I, and I'm going to say it one more time, please do not believe any of this stuff. You need to go and check it and verify it for yourself because you can't be just hanging on what I say or anyone else for that matter. Um, it needs to be on your terms. And don't listen, if someone laughs at you for looking into it, I would cut them out of your life or, tell, or, or give them a chance and say, look, this is what I'm looking at. If you don't like it, there's the door. Or you can take yourself out the door as I did. Um, and those people will remain in denial doesn't mean you're wrong, and it certainly doesn't mean they're right. It just means they're in denial and you've opened your mind. So they can't, they can't say anything to anyone for that stuff. It's like, grow up, we need to grow up. We need to grow up, and because like I said before, it could cause panic, because we're, a lot of us aren't growing up. Once we open our minds and realize that we are infinite awareness, experiencing being a human being, and that we're from the all that all that is. There's nothing to be scared of. You don't need to be scared once you realise that. That's why they need to convince you that you're just a child that needs their hand held every time you go to the toilet. It's why they think we need politicians. You, you might look like that. You might be in a state where you're like, oh, I can't, I can't do that, Alan. And I used to think that. I used to be... People used to say to me like that, I didn't have much going on up in my head and it was true. It doesn't mean you're stupid, it just means you're believing what other people are saying about you. But again, it doesn't mean it's true. Disappear for a year. Get working out, get eating healthy and get reading. And I'm telling you, you'll be, un you'll be unrecognisable in a year. And actually, they'll either walk out your life or people in your life will imitate you. And my, my, my family's imitated me and it's changed their lives. And they've gotten healthy. And I'm proud of that. And you can do the same for yours. It all starts with an open mind and an open heart. It really does. So that, that's, that's just at the end of the material for it. I mean, I could sit for longer and speak about this stuff and I will start doing that. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to keep it because people moan if they're too long. Other people moan if they're too short. So you need to try and get it in the middle. But I'm, I just need to try and spread it out as, as best I can. I'll need to start doing short videos as well. I, I would like to thank you once again for, for watching my video. Um, I hope you get something out of this. At, at the very least, if you go and look at some of the information that I've, that I've said, I would, that, that would obviously, that would be a very good start. Because again, if you need to go and verify the size of the universe, please do, and you'll see for yourself that it's, I would, I'm pretty much going to say it's impossible that we're here alone. Like, and anyone that laughs and says that we are is delusional. Again, I'd like to thank you for, for tuning in. Your support is, it means the world to me, it really does, and I'll do everything I can to try and help, help, help humanity move to the next level so that we can free this planet. Take care, everyone, um, and I'll see you on the next video. Enjoy the rest of your evening, okay? All right, man.